Well, here we are. We're at the Mad River Poker Club here in Dayton, Ohio. We're here for the $15,000 guaranteed $250 buy-in ladies event. So we're here for the ladies event. It's a one fifteen thousand guarantee prize pool, two sixty buy-in. Starts at two p.m. Yes, it does. We'll see you here. Go Akron. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. If you haven't checked out one of several poker clubs in Ohio, well, you're missing out, my poker pals, because today is a special day for your favorite river rat. And we've got our favorite players from all over the state being hosted by Mad River Poker Club. Not only that, we've got the WPA in the house. Well, hey there, Jana. Hi. How are you? I am phenomenal. Long time no see. Hey, and for those of you who don't know, this is Jana Van Dock. She is the only person that this river rat has ever met who took Doyle Brunson out of a tournament. How was that, Jana? He was amazing. He's got that infectious smile that just makes you feel so welcome. Um, he was not at the table very long, and I just happened to wake up with pocket aces when he shoved all in. <laughs> So congratulations for that. But we're here today at the Mad River Poker Club. We're here for the $15,000 guarantee prize pool. And this has somewhat of a sponsorship here. You want to tell us a little bit about this? WPA will celebrate the final table of ladies tournaments. So WPA graciously has donated a beautiful trophy for the winner and gift bags for the final 10. Well, good luck to you, Jana, and I hope you to see too. you there. Thanks. We're coming in on this hand between our big blind and middle position players. I've yet to find a playable hand, so the dealer puts out a flop of 8-8 eight, eight, deuce, couple of clubs. Our big blind, she leads out for 1100, gets smooth called from our middle position player. The turn, it's the jack of clubs, which doesn't seem to have much impact on either one of these players as the big blind makes another $1,100 bet and the middle position player again calls. The river, it's a four flush. This time, big blind leads out for 2K. I'm pretty sure she has that flush of some kind. So that's when our middle position player sneaks in a small raise to 5,000. She had pocket deuces for a flopped full house. And our big blind, she reluctantly turns over her black pocket tens. A few short hands later, I'm in the hijack looking down at pocket deuces. And since those mallards worked so well for my neighbor just a few minutes ago, I decided to punish some limpers and I raised to 1600. Everyone folds, I scoop in a small little pot with zero resistance. Easy game. Several more rounds go by when we find a pretty decent looking hand in this spot, so we're gonna punish the limper here and push the action up a bit and find a raise to 1400. We need to mix up our raising range a bit. Now this deters everyone except our big blind and our under the gun players and I suspect they're looking to protect their chips already committed to the middle or perhaps these ladies really do like their hands. They both become sticky wickets. Either way, we go three ways to the flop of king seven eight all clubs. And when both ladies check, I push what's left of my stack into the middle knowing that I do have that ace club blocker and that does make the big blind fold but not our under the gun gal. Nope, nope, nope. And the way she's fussing a bit, I gotta wonder, was she on a flush draw? Because she peeked at her cards, but then made the relatively easy call as she turns over her jack nine of clubs. She flopped the third nut flush. So with that, the dealer lays down the nine and five of spades, and I'm off to a rebuy. I guess that ace club blocker didn't really work out for me after all. Then after that last disaster and a rebuy, I find a fold fest for a little bit until I find the jiggities. Since I'm in middle position now, I make another pre-flop raise to 1400 and get a smooth call from our low jack player. And she's been fairly active since she sat down. Folds go around to Annette, you met her earlier, she's on the button, she finds the call. And this one's got me worried a bit. She's most likely to have a decent hand. Big line completes. We go four ways to the flop of 10 ace, deuce, couple of clubs, and <laughs> there we go, ace magnets for the jiggities. So I'm not sure how to play these cards because when the big blind checks, I still don't want to give up. So I lead out for 2K and only the low jack player calls. Guess I'm lighting this money on fire too, right? Well, we go heads up to the turn, which comes out the queen of hearts. Another really bad card for my hand. 
so I wisely pump on the brakes, and much to my surprise, so does the low jack. So with the river three of hearts, I kind of toss a couple chips out there, wondering where I'm at, hoping for a fold, but instead I get snap called as I turn over my jacks, get smashed like a bug, with ace jack offsuit for flop top pair. I have to say, she played me like a fiddle with that turn check. Well played, madam. Well played. For this hand, we pick up King-10 offsuit, and I'm a little bit short stacked in the big blind as we watch both our under the gun and middle position players limp in. That's when our cutoff player, she decides to raise the price of poker to 2k, and with only a few more thousand left in my stack, I figure I'm either going to double up or head on over to the cash gain and put this one in my rear view. So I toss out all my high chips and utter that phrase, all in. Folds go back to the gal that I dunked off most of my chips to earlier. She gives a tiny little smirk, so I'm feeling just a little bit better because this might have been a position raise with, I guess she's got some sort of suited connector hand maybe. And that's when she declares, well, these are your chips anyway, then yeah. makes the crying call. So I table my King-10 off suit and she turns over pocket jacks. <laughs> Not sure what the hesitation was here, but I'm not mad either as the dealer delivers two kings and an eight on the flop. The turn was clean with the six of hearts and the river was kind as well with the nine of hearts. And that gave me a much needed double up. Guess those chips had GPS on them after all. Hey there, Marty here, your favorite river rat. I just wanted to pop in and say thanks to everyone who's checked out the show so far. And if this is your first time here, would you consider hitting that like and subscribe button because it'll help our channel grow. And I just want to say thanks to everyone who's shown all your support and love because it's really been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot. Now let's get back to the ladies tournament at Mad River. We still have a few more hands to look at. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's common in tournament play to get moved into the big blind at another table in order to balance out action as players bust out. And what a move this one was. In my very first hand dealt here, I'm looking at the cards every poker yeah. player dreams about. Pocket aces. Yeah, because I... So I try my level best to remain calm as I look across the table at Mad River's previous ladies champ, and I see that she's been hard at work collecting a mound of chips. She also seems to want to put me to the test, and after the under the gun player limps in, she raises my big blind to 2,500. Folds go around back to me, and I know this poker champ isn't messing around, and she's got the stack to prove it. So it's going to be my job to see what she's got here. So I look back at my rockets, hoping to get her to think I'm weak, then pop the price to 5k. Well, the under the gun player quickly gets out of the way, and we're right back onto our champ. Now, if she repops here, I'm sure to shove my stack, no doubt. But if she calls, I'm guessing we'll have some sort of primo hand unless she thinks I'm the fish. And much to my surprise, she flats, which makes me think she might not be as strong as I thought. So let's take a flop. It's king, queen, three, two diamonds. That's when I decide to quickly check, because if she has a hand like ace-x with two hearts or even ace-king, I'm fairly confident she's going to make a stab at this somewhat coordinated board, and that's when I'll deliver her the bad news. But instead, she stares back at me, looking kind of bewildered, and checks back as well. And with a turn jack of hearts, she tosses out a bet of 5k, I quickly respond to a raise of 10k, and then she goes deep into the tank. I don't really think she knows what to make of my action. Then she somehow finds the call. And the river? It's the ace of hearts, which does complete the backdoor flush draw as well as four to a straight out there, but at this point the only hands that seem to make any sense to me, given the way it all played out, would be pocket tens given this board texture. And I ain't afraid of no ghosts. So I decide to shove my stack on this set, even as I stare down at the board, I know that I'm either going to double up here or head on over to the cash game. I sit stoically, awaiting my fate, and then she asks for a count. So she counts out the call and chips, sets those aside, and then looks at her remaining stack to see that she's getting about 3 to 1 on her money. And even if she's wrong, she's still going to have a healthy stack, and she makes the correct call. Then when she tables her king-10 offsuit, we find out she's got the river straight. Now I have to give it to her, that dirty ace on the river did make it difficult for her to call, but as a spoiler, it did give her more momentum as she ultimately would take this one down. 
Well played here, champ. Well played. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. And a huge thank you to Mad River Poker Club and the Women's Poker Association for hosting this incredible event. And if you'd like to know more about who made the final table and who took down the tournament, a little spoiler here, she won this event last time too. Congrats, champ. Go ahead and check them out on Facebook. I've got their deets in the description box down below. And while you're there, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep bringing you more poker shenanigans just like what you'll find over here. Until next time, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.